Um, when when you graduated from West Point, so you knew you were going to medical school, right? Where did you think your career was going to take you? Not here <laughs> at all. I mean, that's why um, you know it was it was hard to tell. I mean, it was uh, hadn't really thought about it initially. Um, you know, it was it was kind of like, what's the next step? Trying to get through medical school, trying to you know get through the next um, area. I love the military just because I'm from a, a military background. I, I, uh, Dad loved the Army, he was in for 33 years, so I knew I wanted to be in the Army. Um, knew I wanted to stay in the Army, but I never had any any illusions that I would be where I am today, because I wasn't one of those, you know, you know, star women and, you know, got the leadership, all the leadership awards and leadership this. I mean, I was like, eh, you know, really. I was nothing, I mean, if you looked at me back then, I was nothing that stood out that would have told someone, anyone, I don't think, um, Oh, she's going to be the Surgeon General someday. I don't think anyone, and if they say that now, they're not telling the truth. <laughs> because it was like, you know, I was, I was, I was average, you know, um, and, I, and I was glad that I made it through. And so I, I never, I never thought that I would be here today. I just wanted to, you know, keep going uh, and do the best that I could in any job that I was given. And I think that was. Uh, you know, just having having a sense of excitement of okay, I get to go here. You know, choosing my first assignment. You know, Fort Benning. Okay, Fort Benning. You know, home of the infantry. Okay, I get to go to Benning. You know, what can I learn here? What can I do here? And when I deployed with the 197th, which was at Kelly Hill and Benning, it's like wow, okay, now with the infantry. Yeah, you know, what can I learn here? You know, and so it's kind of just these kind of fun, um, challenging. It wasn't all fun. It wasn't all roses. I mean, but it was just what can I learn at each step of the way, and. Um, but again, never, never thought that I would be here. And I, I think that would be the, le the message: is kind of let your path, um, you know, yeah, be prepared. You know, Colin Powell says, you know, luck is you know opportunity plus preparation. So a lot of people say, oh gosh, you must, you know, this person's lucky. This person's lucky. Yeah, well, they, you know, they don't see all the preparation and the fact that they put themselves in position. So of course, I did all my my medical school or my, my military education and training. A lot of times people say, ah, docs don't need to do that. But I wanted to learn, I wanted to make sure I was the best I could be at my craft, both medically and militarily. And when opportunities came up, I you know, said, yeah, that sounds interesting. I'd like to try that. Um, sometimes jumping into things I had no idea what I was getting into. But then they ended up being some of the, one of some of the most interesting things I've ever done. And so, you know. What would you do differently? Um, well, I was telling, someone asked this question before, when I was a kid, I wouldn't have been such a scaredy cat. <laughs> I was just such a scaredy cat. When you, when you look back now, I mean, you know, going through, remember, seniors were just like 20, 21 year olds, 22, but they seemed like old men. Well, they were men when I was doing right. first, they were like old men, but they, I should have reminded myself, hey, these guys don't have any more of a clue to life. Maybe they're three or four years older than me. Um, but of course, it's hard when you're a 17 year old. I was as a plea to, to know that. So, what I would have done differently is just put everything in context and perspective and not just been taking such, you know, got out of my room more. I was mm -hmm. like, a, you, know, you know, didn't know, I mean, I didn't even know where the first D club was. It's really sad. <laughs> I don't want back there. Because, you know, I just stayed in my room and did my studies and, you know, like I said, I would have probably got, done, you know, got out more mm -hmm. and not been, been so afraid and not realize that the consequences of, you know, not having your underwear folded just the right way really is not that big of a deal. <laughs> it was then, you know, for, you know, for Saturday morning inspection, but right. at the end of the day, I'd probably be okay, you know, if I, but I would worry about stuff like that, you know? But really, I would, I would worry about stuff like that, and, uh, and, and I would probably not have or, but again, it's easier to tell yourself back then, right? Than you're, uh, than you're, than you, than you do when you're going through. All right. Obviously, you remember the Titans fan. Yes. What book have you recommended or gifted the most? Uh, What's well, a tie? Okay. So, um, it works for me. It worked for me. Mm -hmm. Colin Powell. That's probably one of the best books. He, he's like one of my heroes. Um, because uh, it was just really simple about, I mean, you didn't have to read it, you know, if those not familiar with the book, it's not like a novel, you have to read it, there's certain chapters, and it kind of gives you just you know, kind of tip, tidbits about leadership and how to handle certain situations. 
and it clearly worked for him, right? You know, four-star general, you know, joint, joint chiefs and, and secretary of state. So that's one book I recommend because it's, it's practical knowledge from someone who knows what he's talking about. Um, and is just an awesome leader, kind of, you know. He came and talked to us. He was a graduate of National War College, and it was his 60th anniversary. And so he came and talked to us. And it was supposed to be an hour-long lecture. I think it went for two and a half, three hours, because no one wanted him to leave. And we had to be in the, in the auditorium like an hour before he got there. And so everybody was sitting there, and because you, you, just to hear him talk without a piece of paper, just going, I mean, what a great leader. And so he just kind of put a lot of his thoughts down there. I think that would be a great book. So, and the other one um, that I, you know, earlier in, you know, well, there's a new one, three. So early on was before, because it was before General Powell wrote his book, was Gifted Hands. Um, that was a great book, um, and because, you know, uh, uh, Dr. Carson really had a big influence on me. I remember. I was. I remember exactly where I was at GW Medical School when he was. He came on TV um, to talk about when he separated the first time ever separated twins that were connected at the at the head and uh, the youngest um, chief of neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins University, an African American male. I, I remember just. I was. I was just shocked. And if you read his story, where he came from, um, you know, his mom had you know a you know third grade education. And he and his brother both would, would be considered throwaways in, some, in society, right? What do they ever amount to? And, you know, he and his brother both did very much. Brother's an engineer. And so I, I used that book a lot for some of my soldiers who'd be getting into trouble. Because he got into trouble, you know, his story is very compelling. And I would just say, look, you know, here's a person now who's a neurosurgeon who is kind of like the ultimate doctor, I mean, a brain surgeon. How hard is that? And look where he started. And so no excuses for you. You can do it if you want to. And so I used to give give him that book, and then the one recently is Lean In, um, and another one that you know more recent ones uh, by, by Cheryl Sandberg because that, that's I, I remember hearing the NPR um, you know, discussion of it when it first came out, and I was like, that's me, that's me, oh that's me, you know, because she was talking about not you know wanting to sit at the table, all those different things, and so that's a really good book I think as well for for individuals to say, hey, you, know, you do have to lean in, you do have to, you, know, you, you do have a right to be at the table. If you've gone to the schools and you've gotten the education, you have the competence, why not you? So that's one that, uh, so those, those three. I know you said one, but that's. No, that's fine. It gave, yeah. it gave me one more book I need to put on my reading list, so right. thank you for that. So as we wrap up this first fireside chat, I'm going to quote you again. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> you said, it doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you finish. What final thoughts would you like to share with our West Point? Wow, I mean that that, that sums it up, and um, you know, and, and and those those know my story. I mean, I was uh, one of twelve adopted children, and so uh, you know, God blessed me with a wonderful, awesome family. You know, but it could have been um, could have been the other way. Could have not been here at all. So I'm, I'm I live a life of gratitude because uh, it doesn't matter. My parents always, always used to tell me that. You know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, you know, you know, where you come from, what your background is. Um, it's what you do with the chances that you're given, and it's um, how you uh, take, op you know, take all the opportunities that come your way and make the best of them. And then put yourself in a position where you can take advantage of opportunities, and then run hard across the finish line. Don't let up, and do not, do not let other people tell you what you can't do. Okay, because they will. You know, we used to call those the barracks lawyers. Remember? You know, guys would give, you know, weren't lawyers, but they'd give their friends all kinds of advice what they should and shouldn't do and get them in trouble. So don't let anyone tell you um, that your dream is not, you know, doesn't make sense or it's silly or you can never do that. Because um, if, if I had listened to folks that had told me that, I wouldn't be here today. So, ma'am, I want to thank you again for your time. It, it means a lot to us, and I know you've answered a lot of questions that our community has. So right. thank you for your time and uh, be Navy. Of course, beat Navy, beat everybody, right? <laughs>